This is Common Core State Standard Support Video in Mathematics. The standard is 6SP5C. The standard reads, summarize numerical data sets in relation to their context, such as by Part C states, giving quantitative measures of center, median and or mean, and variability in a quartile range and mean absolute value deviation, as well as describing any overall pattern and any striking deviations from the overall pattern with reference to the context in which the data was gathered. The ideas, the concepts of median and mean are probably the most familiar to us, so we need to review the two items that deal with variability, mean absolute deviation and interquartile range. These two concepts are probably the more difficult, so let's go over those. Mean absolute deviation. It sounds complicated, but it really is a pretty simple concept. It's simply the average distance of all of the data points from the mean or the average of the data. So let's look at this sample. You have uh, four data points. Maybe these are uh, test grades. Maybe they're the high temperatures of the last four days. Again, it could fit a lot of different contexts. Now, when we take these four data values and we do the average, it comes out to be 81. So now, the mean absolute deviation is just how far are my data points away from the average of 81. So the first step is to take the difference of each of those data points from the mean, which in this case is 81. Now, we have a little bit of a problem here. We have some negative values and we have some positive values. We are only concerned with how far away that each data point is from the mean regardless of direction. So for example here the 78 is 3 away from 81 and so is 84. The difference is that one is in one direction and one is in the opposite direction. So we have 81 and one of them is three away in that direction, the other one is three away in this direction, but they're still three away. So the way to adjust for that is to just deal with the absolute value. In other words, all we need to do is take our values and just make them all positive. So now we take these four values that constitute the difference away from the mean and then just uh, do what we typically would do for an average. We add all of these up and then divide in this case by four so we get a mean absolute deviation of two. Let's try a second set of data. Now this data was set up deliberately where we also have the exact same mean. We have a mean of 81 again. But this time the values are quite large. Our values are negative 19, negative 8, 12, and 15. And again we're not concerned with the direction so we make them all absolute value, the positive differences. And then when we average those four values we get 13.5. That's a much larger, larger value than we had earlier with the mean absolute deviation of two. Now notice here at the bottom of the page, uh, we've done a dot plot to kind of see where our data falls and notice the distinctions. These four data points here constitute our first set of data and notice that they're all pretty close to our mean of 81. So that smaller value of 2 for the mean absolute deviation makes sense. Now look at the other data points. Uh, notice that they are much more widely dispersed. They're pretty scattered, which correlates to the higher mean absolute deviation value of 13.5. So when you're dealing with the mean absolute deviation, the closer that your value gets to 0, the more and more densely packed your data is going to be. And the larger and larger that the mean absolute deviation becomes, your data likewise, all those points are going to be more widely scattered. Now let's look at the interquartile range. The mean absolute deviation dealt with the mean. Now the interquartile range is going to focus on medians. So 
The computation for interquartile range is always done with the median, not with the mean. When you look at the word quartile, that brings to mind quarters, and that's exactly what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with uh, your set of data being divided up into four equal parts. To get the interquartile range, we're actually dealing with the middle half of the data. You know, the, this 25% and this 25%. And your interquartile range is simply how far is it from this median to this median. Now, a, a bit of caution here. Uh, when we talk about the interquartile range, uh, one perspective of a quartile refers to the subset of all the data values in each of those four parts. So that's one perspective. Another perspective of a quartile is that it refers to the cutoff values between the subsets. So when we're talking about quartile one, when we're dealing with the computation, then the reference is to that value. And then for quartile three, the reference is to that value. But if we're looking at it from a data perspective, it deals with the data that falls in the third quartile. It might be a little bit easier to understand if we go ahead and look at a set of data and determine what the interquartile range would be. Now, since we're dealing with medians, the first thing that we have to do is we have to ensure that the data is listed in order from least to greatest, and in this case, uh, that hasn't been done yet. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Now notice here, there's a little formula here. Uh, it's a nice little easy way to remember where your median is going to be. Uh, your middle term is simply going to be however many there are in your data set. Add one and divide by two. So in this case, uh, our number of data values is 14. Uh, add that to one, that'd be 15 divided by two, that's seven and a half. So in this case, I know that my median would fall, it wouldn't be a value of seven and a half, it would fall halfway between the seventh and the eighth terms. So let's uh, determine our initial median, the median for all of our data set. So we put them in order and we know that the median is going to fall halfway between the seventh and the eighth terms, which would be here. Our seventh term is 16, our eighth term is 17. Halfway, the average between those two would be 16.5. So that's our median for the whole data set. Now we have to determine the medians of the lower half and the top half. So again, here's our lower half, and so I need to determine what my median is for that data set. And then over here, the upper half, we need to determine what that median is. So in this case, we have seven values on the lower half and likewise on the upper half. So seven plus one is eight divided by two is four. So I know that the fourth term will be the median for each of the halves. So that's the fourth term there. And let's see, one, two, three, that's the fourth term there. Now notice that in this data set, the values for your third and first quartiles actually were values that are part of the data set. Sometimes that'll happen, sometimes it won't. Notice that the median for all of the data set was 16.5, which is not one of your data values. So now we have to subtract the value for the third quartile uh, the upper end of the third quartile, which is 24, and we have to subtract the 9, which is the upper value, you know, the uh, median for the lower half of the data, which was a 9 again, so 24 minus 9 is 15. So our interquartile range is 15 for this. Now notice that this is not a box plot, okay? Uh, this is just a little visual explanation, a visual representation of where our data falls in each of the quartiles. Let's do a second set of data. Now here we have an odd number of data values. This time we have nine data values. Again, the first thing that we have to do since we're dealing with the median is we have to ensure that the data is in order from least to greatest. So we put them in order from least to greatest. Uh, nine plus one is 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I know that our middle term is going to be 
the fifth term, which in this case is going to be a 15. Then we have to find the median of the lower half of the data and the upper half of the data. Uh, we have 4, so we know that uh, 4 divided by 4 plus 1 is 5 divided by 2, that's 2.5. So I know that my median is going to fall halfway between the second and the third data points, which for the lower half would be 8, and for the upper half, that would be a 17. Then to get our interquartile range, we simply take the difference between those two values, the 17 and the 8, and so we get an interquartile range of 9, so which is basically, again, the range of your middle half of your data. Notice here that those two values, the 8 and the 17, were not data points. Again, there's no set rule. Uh, it just depends on where the data falls as to whether the values for the first and the third quartiles are data points or not. And again, this is not a box plot. It's just a visual representation of our data in this case. Now, a little bit of caution here. The way that we've been doing the medians here is something called the m and method, uh, Moore and McCabe. And the primary reason for that is because a lot of the calculators are programmed to do it this way. Now, there's other ways of getting your medians for your interquartile range. Now look at the second box, and this is the exact same data set. Now there's a second method called the two keys method, developed by John Tukey. The difference is that when you have an odd number of data points, for this method, the median, the middle term for the odd number of data points is actually counted for both the upper and the lower halves of your data. So you're actually counting that data point twice. And if you look at the data, that is going to make a difference in a lot of cases as to where your medians are going to fall for the upper half of your data and the lower half of your data. So again, it's a different approach. Not a whole lot of difference, but it is different. And then these three methods here, Mendenhall and Sinkage, Minitab, and Freund and Perls, uh, that method is used uh, with Microsoft Excel. These methods are other methods of determining your medians for your interquartile range. Uh, those are based on statistical software packages. So don't be surprised if your students are using their computers uh, or something off of the internet to do the computations. They can end up with different values simply because of the differences in the software. So again, just some caution here that there are different approaches, there's different methods to actually determine the values for your medians that will then be used to determine your interquartile range.